My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me now and we will explore these topics and so much more with fascinating guests, authors, and experts who will guide us to Destination Unlimited. Valentine's Day, love is in the air. This Roman pagan festival turned Day of Remembrance of two Christian martyrs named Valentine by the Church was romanticized by Shakespeare and Chaucer in their works and turned into the hallmark holiday that we know and love or dread today in 1913. Each year, more than 144 million Valentine cards are exchanged, making it the second largest greeting card holiday, not to mention flowers, chocolates, jewelry, and other tokens of affection. Projections are that $18.2 billion will have been spent in the United States alone when this day is over. While love may be in the air, many ask, is love in their stars? Is there a connection between romantic compatibility and our birth and progressive astrological charts? Joining me this evening on Destination Unlimited to address this question and other matters astrological is Deborah Silverman. Deborah is part comedian, part psychologist, part astrologer, and all real. She helps people turn on their own inner observer to see the things they say and do in a totally objective way. In her practice for more than 38 years, Deborah uses astrology and her own system called the Four Elements, or 4E for short, as tools to help people step into their own power. She's the author of The Missing Element, Inspiring Compassion for the Human Condition, numerous columns, hosts her own radio shows, and her YouTube channel has more than 3 million views. Her websites are thestarcommunity.com and deborasilvermanastrology.com. Please Please join me in welcoming Deborah Silverman. Happy Valentine's Day, Deborah. Thank you, Victor. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Deborah, when did you first develop your interest in astrology? I was really young. I think some people that know astrology will say the same thing that since they were kids, they read Linda Goodman's Sun Signs or they looked in the newspaper and they were just fascinated. And I was one of those people that for some reason, and it didn't take very long, by the time I was 20, I was a professional. It's such a crazy story. It was it was like, you know how some kids go to play piano? It's very rare. And suddenly they're playing full songs. And you're like, how'd that happen? Mm-hmm. That, that would have happened to me with astrology. I, I didn't really know it, but it seemed to be such an easy way for me to communicate. And I articulated it so young that I became obsessed and still am. It's kind of scary. And, and, what, and what happened at age 20? Well, I had a first reading. I had an astrology reading. And the woman was so accurate it was so it was so um, helpful to have somebody see into my soul and be able to articulate. I didn't know I was too young to actually have the ability to understand because I was one of those kids, as we all were, that were left alone too much or isolated or just didn't feel seen. And at 20 years old, she gave me this gift of, of really deep witnessing. And that was a languaging that she – I was like, what just happened? Mm. And then I became obsessed. Wonderful. Without giving us your birth date, what are your signs, your rise, your sun sign, your moon, and your rising? Sun in Gemini, moon in Aries, and Libra rising. And what do those elements together make for you? Fire and air. A little bit of excitement, a lot of words, and a lot of vitality. That would be the simple. I, I lacked in earth and water. I had to balance it. And that's what my book is all about. Learning what missing element you have. Mm-hmm. And then growing it because it's unnatural. We don't want to do the hard one. We want to just stay with comfort. By human nature, by design, gravity kind of wins with everybody. We go for the short, easy version, and we don't really have a desire to push. But when you learn your missing element, you stretch into that. And the next thing you know, you've got a balanced system. We'll talk a little bit more about the four element system that you developed a little bit later on in the show. But you're also a psychologist. Now, was there ever a time that you found psychology and astrology clashing? Did you know that Carl Jung was was an astrologer? Yes. And he was quoted to say, psychology will be a dinosaur science until it includes astrology. Mm -hmm. So they're best friends. If you think about it, I mean, it makes so much sense that every psychologist should be considering a spiritual vantage point 
not just the physical mundane world, because we are spiritual beings, as we all know, taking on these funny little human packages. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. What do you see as the role of astrology in practical terms? Well, we were just talking about this. It's so important that it not be jargon. <clears throat> Most astrologers that you meet will start talking, and you'll be like, what did she just say? And it becomes a distancing tool to be able to feel like you know more than the other or you can't understand them. My whole system is, how do I make astrology practical? I give you directives. And every reading that I train my astrologers to do, they look at your chart and they see what's your missing element and what is the specific skill or tool. So for some people, it's getting back to their music. For some people, it's getting into exercise again. For some people, it's you know writing or dancing. But there's all these latent gifts that we left way behind. Mm. What are the basic... Get, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. And then we get old and fat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you don't move energy. That's really what happens. Mm. What, what are the basic truths that you found about astrology? There's a design. God is not playing with dice. I love that quote by Einstein. I think the first thing astrology has given me is a deep respect for the magical world that we don't understand it, but in no question at all, from every flower opening to every piece of fruit we eat to the stars hit, this is a magical land. So I've really been a firm believer now that I've had this many years with astrology. I know there's a design. I know that there's choice. There's very limited choice. There's very little free will in our experience. Most of what your hair looks like in the person, your dog you had when you were a kid and your first heartbreak, all those things were written. It comes a point in time where we choose. And that's a very powerful moment when you become present and awake to say, I'm going to choose this, either accept my fate and fall in love with it or change it. Mm -hmm. So that's astrology. It gives you a real powerful door of the observer watching yourself from a non-judgmental place where you're like, yeah, I guess you're right. Now that I think about it, I always complain or, oh, now I realize that, yes, I have a tendency to be a little bit nitpicky. <laughs> so this, these repetitive behaviors become cute and endearing rather than embarrassing and confusing. So I think one of the gifts of astrology is compassion. Like, I get to watch people fall in love with themselves. So first of all, there's a design. Second of all, you get recommitted to your purpose. That's one of my favorite parts of astrology. It's really helped me fall in love with my fate. It's a song that I wrote. You want to hear it? Please. Falling in love with your fate. Falling in love with your fate. Falling, 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 falling in love with your fate. I know, keep my day job. But the point is, if you can fall in love with your fate, your whole life would change. If you could just accept what life has handed you. Interesting, interesting. Without going into uh, a lot of details, um, and without doing a lot of chart work here, uh, I am uh, Sun and Cancer, Moon in Aquarius, and Cancer Ascendant. What would you t say about me? You have a chart like Lady Di. I don't know if you knew that. Lady Diana was a, a cancer with moon and Aquarius. Very compassionate. You hide. You don't come out of the house. I mean, people think you're so social, but you are not coming out of the house. <laughs> you have a very profound relationship with your bedroom and your things and your comfort. And it's important you do that because you're vibrationally um, very, very sensitive and detached at the same time. That must be confusing. Like you feel everything and then you want to cut off. Is that right? Well, you know, the Capricorn in me, uh, being Capricorn, being my sun sign, is uh, very... Back? I'm sorry? Back up. You said you were Cancer Sun. No, no, Cancer Ascendant. Capricorn Sun. But well, you didn't say Capricorn I'm sun. sorry. You might, you might have cut off by the, the, the uh, Skype here. Um, Capricorn Sun, Aquarius Moon, and Cancer Ascendant. Okay, no, that your, your chart just changed. Okay, <laughs> no, that's not you. So now you really do get things done. That's a very big difference. So that means that your ambition is uh, primary, and it's, it walks over or it puts aside your relationship with, um, it's funny to say this, with your family. You're very good with, the, with giving to other people mm -hmm. in a universal way. You've got, you've got universal love. Mm -hmm. it's, not personal, it's not personal love. It's universal love. Is that true? Uh, to a certain extent. It's kind of modified because my uh, feelings extend both to my family and to others. Yes, and what year, can I ask what year you were born? 1953. Oh, boy, so you're a deep one. Mm -hmm. so, 50, so Santa was either in Scorpio or in Libra. How would we figure that out? So wait, I'll ask you a question. Is leadership been a big part of your life? Yes, it has, absolutely. You're always the one in the front going, I'll do it? Yes, you want me to tell you where Saturn was uh, 27 degrees in Libra? Yes, that's what I thought. So guess what? 
next year is a big turning point for you. 2019, you can make a big move. And and what happened in um, 2011 and 2012? 2011 and 2012 would have been six or five or six years ago. Um, Were there health issues? Not really, no, no. The, the, the last big health issue was in 2005. So you didn't make a move or end, anything in 2010, 11, 12, nothing changed? I had a, a change in my pursuit of certain aspects of my career. Yes, I did in, the, in those days, yes. The career that's my, aspects. That's my point. So there was a change, that that change that happened then is going to do another turnaround next year. Like, I think you're, you're refining your... Um, ambition to be less effort more results everything you want right now is less effort more results yes absolutely yeah yeah i'm also getting closer to the point of retirement from my so-called day job in the pursuit of my spiritual work which would be the next next aspect of my life that sounds like a good deal victor absolutely. Get to go do work as a grown-up that's the gift of elder <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know, it's funny. You talk about the way we are as, as, as we grow when we're younger and as we mature and see more of the aspects of our life and what our fate is meant to be. I think we sort of mature and grow into those roles as we get older. Do you see that with most people? Totally. I, this thing about growing up, mm-hmm. I'm loving it. I, it's so much more fun being in the position of the wisdom keeper. I was so long a wisdom seeker. Mm-hmm. And now there's a comfort in my own authority. I never thought I'd say that. It's very funny. Someone said, once you get to the 50s and 60s, you finally trust yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I trust me. Absolutely. I feel the same way. My guest is Deborah Silverman, and we'll be back with more Endeavor. We'll talk a little bit about romance and St. Valentine's Day and astrology after these words from the Ohm Times Radio Network. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action, and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. I do not love him. Hamilton the Pug's adoption story started at a shelter. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this evening, Deborah Silverman. We're talking about astrology, we're talking about romance, we're talking about life, and we're going to talk about the elements that have to do with the missing aspects of our natal chart. So tell our guests about the genesis of your system, the four elements. So there is four different personality types. This is very, very ancient. It comes all the way from the American Indians honoring four directions to the Kabbalistic values of the four worlds to the Buddhist four noble truth. There's just four everywhere. (laughs) In Hawaii, there's the four elements. So once you begin to understand the principles of creation, and you see it in your own personality, it gives vitality. It it wakes people up. So first is water. Those are people that are super sensitive. They cry at commercials. They save things. They love to be at home. It's what I imagined you were to start with, Victor, which you're not any longer, double cancer. Um, They're very cuddly. They're very internal. They love pets and animals and family and friends, and they much prefer to be alone than be around somebody else. The second, and that's water, sensitive. 
The second category is ear people, which is clearly what you are, Victor, talking, communicating, um, socializing, being able to have ideas and independent thought from the way they dress to the way they organize their house. They're just completely artistic, strange, but creative, um, unique characters who want nothing more than for you to like them. They're, they're charming and pleasers and fun. And airheads. <laughs> they're called air signs. The third category is earth. These are the practical, grounded, money, cleaning. You know, they love to go to Costco. They love Excel spreadsheets. They love to have things in taxes. They love doing their taxes. They love, they have a practical, grounded, as compared to the air people who forgot where they left their receipts, and then their water person who's trying to make sure everything's taken care of. And then the earth person is very stable and solid and grounded, Mr. Capricorn. And then the last category is fire, and these are the very loud people. I was just watching one today in a public place. He's just so fire. I don't, didn't know him, but you knew immediately he was fire. They have no volume knob. Very excitable, very enthusiastic, um, physical, athletic. Per, like they are like theater, theatrical and creative, and so they have a very strong personality. And these four have to live in all of us. If we miss water, your sensitivity, your emotional body, your air, your ability to communicate and be light, earth your ability to stay grounded or fire your ability to have fun you know if any of those are down you're going to lose your balance and how do these manifest in our lives take an example of someone that we would know in celebrity and and how they would manifest in that person's life let's do trump such a great example of astrology he has sun in gemini he's born under a full moon uh in moon and sag those two signs just talk they have no need for structure, they're spontaneous, they're off the beaten path, they have this incredible gift of the gab, they exaggerate, they tell stories, they believe their stories, and then he's Leo rising, which is fire, his moon's in fire, Sag, and his rising is fire, so he's got this bigger than life personality, Leo rising, wants all the attention, really needs to be approved of and liked, and his life lesson is water, cancer, he doesn't have a very easy time with being gentle or quiet or feminine or in a more vulnerable or more honest. <laughs> How's that? that that's, that's pretty, that's pretty accurate. And how does he compare to other presidents? Well, Obama was a um, fire sign as well, Leo, but his rising sign was the opposite of Trump. It was Aquarius. So his whole thing was humanitarian and being colorblind, being able to see the universality. And he had moon and Gemini, very articulate emotionally. He could put his words together with, he was an orator. And his life lesson, he, and obviously he loved his children. He had Venus and Cancer. What was his life lesson? It's a really good question. I should know, but I don't. But clearly, um, Obama's gift of presentation was the opposite of what you see with Trump. And generally speaking, if you look at presidents going back, where, where does Trump fall in? Is, is there anyone else who's ever been like Trump? You know, <clears throat> Astrologically, yes. There are definitely big personalities in the White House. He has an indicator in his chart, Trump, of always having to be the best at what he does. That can lend itself to president status. And yes, there are other presidents who have son in the 10th house. It's not fair. I think a better question is, why are these times so different that it allows us? We, in no other time in history would there be any tolerance for this. This was this, You couldn't get into the White House without having your FBI papers completed. Now we can just, everything's so lackadaisical. It's a different sensibility. He's empowered with a different set of values. So a better question is, what is it about these times that allowed this to happen? And? <laughs> I knew you were going to throw it back on me. Um, I would say, not unlike every time something changes in a radical way. So if we think back to any history time, any historical time when there is chaos before there's creation, something goes off in order for us to change. That is exactly what's occurring right now. We have uh, exhausted, astrologically it's true, uh, a period of uh, an era that was supposed to be about unconditional love. We were supposed to have finished the Piscean Age where we really learned how to turn the other cheek and all the messages of the Christ energy was what we were supposed to learn. I think we failed. And now we're in the Aquarian Age, which is be yourself, don't follow the rules, who cares about the structure, the government and the old system's dated, we don't want that old. So there's this radical departure, and the only way that's going to be understood is from the larger picture where you go, oh, well, this has to happen 
from the biggest picture, this is what my book is about. These changes have to happen in order for us to be pushed into change. And yes, this is a time of change. Start in the 60s. And what do you see as the change that's coming? If you use 1960s as the clue from the end of the Piscean Age, I think it shifted in 1960. There's no obvious direct time, but it's so clear to me. The consumption of drugs and throwing our society upside down and no one believing in the establishment and throwing away all the confines, the bras and the flags. And I'd say that this moment in time, we're only at the beginning of it, we're headed to a new definition of human experience. Everything from electricity running our systems to the human body being different in its abilities to be fixed. And we have a future that is unacknowledged or unrecognizable to us that is very uncomfortable because we have to let go of the sentimental values of some of the old-fashioned things I love, like water, air, earth, and fire. <laughs> the, the primitive, raw elements have been dismissed. So my suggestion for us in this transition, if I had, you know, had a voice, it would be to say, please don't ever take for granted the sun coming up, your, your barefoot feet on the grass, your ability to take a hot shower, like the, the tea that you have, the food, like relish the practical world. Give yourself back to the beauty of a lifetime because we've gotten so distracted by these funny computers that we're losing our hearts. And if we lose our hearts, we won't consider the climate a big enough problem because we're just indulging in our comfort. And if we indulge in our comfort, we're going to fall asleep. And if we fall asleep, uh uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. How much has the digital age affected this? This is called the Aquarian Age in astrology. The Aquarian Age is, they, this was known. We would get to a phase where the human, see, you're built for the job with Moon and Aquarius. You can cut off. But we are not built as humans. We're so sentimental. We're not making the transition from the last era to this era comfortably. We're resisting every step of the way. We don't want to let go. We don't want to say that. We don't want to let go. We don't want to say. And so there's this confusion. If there was some leadership, there was some intelligence that was brought to us by a council of elders, God, if there was just some organizing government that could help us but we're we're doing this in the dark we're in a very vulnerable moment it's not bad but it feels horrible but do you see light coming in the future i am a pessimist at one level because i watch human nature and i'm an optimist at the other level where i see the divine so i'm not the best person to ask i have a a dualistic i can't get a concrete answer i I hate to say that but my optimism i think in the end will always win out Because I have such deep faith. You asked the question earlier, what do I know for sure from astrology? There is a design. God's not playing with dice. He may not, or she may not, or life can't interrupt us and take the reins back. What it can do is hope that some of us will become agents of listening. So we can be the intercessor. And that's what you're doing. You're, You're helping us listen. Absolutely. I had a wonderful spiritual teacher 20 years ago who used to say, everything is unfolding in divine order, and that you may not see it that way, you may not feel or experience it that way, but if you allow yourself to go on your path, recognizing it, then everything will at the end be okay. Yes, everything in the end is okay. If it's not the end, if it's not okay, it's not the end. I love there, there you go. I like that. I like that a lot. So let's talk about a little, let's start breaking into interpersonal relationships. How does our chart affect interpersonal relationships? I think a, a good question is what allows some people to find their soulmate when they're 20 and some people that soulmate died when he, they were 24, and then some people meet their sec, their first soulmate when they're 70. Like, what are the variables that allow us to manifest partners? And what is the criteria to know to stay in a healthy relationship? That would be such a great Valentine conversation. Like, whew, how do you know? And by the way, astrology does give us some clues that in a lifetime, karmically, will you be in partnership or not? Mm. And be sustainable or not. There are indicators that that describe extreme compatibility, extreme attraction with no compatibility, and then just the silly thing called karma where you don't even know how you ended up sitting next to that person. Like, what happened? So start talking about that a little bit, and we're going to pick it up on the second, uh, the third segment of the show. Go ahead. Uh, I would say the first piece is Cupid has no eyesight. She just puts you together with these people that when you're young, you don't know why that first partner came and showed up, your first love. And sometimes it knocks the wind out of you because I remember one of my sons fell in love. He was like 10 and he was like, if this is falling in love, I hate this feeling. (laughs) (laughs) 
I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, but this is that feeling. And so there is an original opening that has to happen. And the, the nature of karma is some people make it irresistible. You know, that it, you can't resist um, falling in love. Isn't it funny how you meet someone and you're like gone? Yep, absolutely. And there's no hope. It's like a drug. And then there's other people you're with and you're like, how am I supposed to be able to stay with this story? And you don't know whether to get out or get in. If you're one of those people, if you're, if this is Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is a, it should be a day of record. What was that? What was that, Victor? That was just a shuffling of papers because I'm looking for something that I was about to say. But I'm going to say that my guest this evening on Destination Unlimited is Deborah Silverman. Deborah, please tell our listeners where they can find out more about your work and your book. That was very funny. Um, my book is called The Missing Element. The subtitle is Inspiring Compassion for the Human Condition. You can get that on Amazon or you can go to my website and I'll sign a copy for you, which is DebraSilvermanAstrology.com. It's a great gift by your partner um, to read together because you take the test. In the middle of the book is a test, and you get to see which one is which. And it's very revealing as a couple to understand the other. So that was one way is the um, my website, DebraSilvermanAstrology.com. You'll see that Sting gave me an endorsement. He's a good friend, and he uh, loved the book. And then you can also get it on Amazon, of course. or And they even sell it in the bookstores at Amazon. Um, you can call any major bookstore and they'll probably be able to order it for you. And we'll be back with more of Deborah Silverman after these words from the Ohm Times Radio Network. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Are you in an interfaith relationship and thinking of getting married? For 18 years, Rev. Lori Sue Brockway has been creating personalized, loving, and romantic ceremonies for couples of all faiths and cultural backgrounds. Rev. Lori Sue's sensitivity to the needs of interfaith couples is reflected in the compassionate and inclusive way she addresses the concerns of parents and families. Rev. Lori Sue Sue is also the author of several best-selling books on interfaith weddings and wedding vows. Selected as one of the top interfaith officiants by New York Magazine, Reverend Lori Sue serves couples in the New York metropolitan area and beyond. Find out more at her website, yourinterfaithwedding.com. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Hi, this is Bill Maher. I can find humor in almost anything, but one thing I never laugh about is cruelty to animals. If you don't get the joke either, write People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 501 Front Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this evening, Deborah Silverman. We're talking about astrology and love. Now, Deborah, those of us who were young adults in the 70s remember the famous pickup line, what's your sign? But when it comes to compatibility, aren't we an amalgamation of so many different aspects? And that old pickup line was really not worthwhile. <laughs> Did it work for you, Victor? I never used that line. I was not that kind of person because of my, my compatibility and my signs. But go ahead. Those are your Capricorn. That's right. Let's see. Um, there's definitely compatibility in astrology. There's definitely that pickup line, what is your sign, does not include, as you said, your sun, moon, and rising. Again, my point, Cupid is blind. She doesn't really care. She puts you together with the weirdest signs, and they don't really care if they're compatible. You get a vote after you're in the relationship and get to say, is this really working? How much am I being myself? And yes, with some people, it's isn't it crazy? 
what chemistry does. Some people, it's just effortless to be yourself. Think of your best friend. Absolutely. And why is it? And why is it? Because your best friend has no agenda. They don't want to change you. They think you're amazing as compared to your wife or your husband who thinks, you know, if you would just stop. <laughs> That's so funny. If it's your best friend, they don't want to change you. Isn't they want to help you. Go ahead. Isn't it true that we have relationships to help us grow also? Well, that's the point, is they want to help you grow into what you want. They're not imposing. Yes, any friend, your best friend wants you to grow, I hope. Unless the friendship's based on potato chips and hamburgers or something and sitting around at Wendy's. But if it's a good, healthy friendship and your partner, if you ask this question, it's a great question. Is my partner my best friend? Mm-hmm. Because some people, it's not true. Their best friend is not who they sleep with. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're in the first time of, I call it her story instead of his story. It used to be his story, but now it's her story. It's the first time in her story that you get to choose who you want to be with or not. You get to choose whether you want to have kids or not. This is the Aquarian age. We never lived in a time period that you were allowed to step away from the collective agreements and not be banished. And find yourself alone and isolated because you stood apart. Now you can stand apart and they're like, yay, I love your style. Where do I get that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Uh, this is for my current marriage is my second marriage and probably the third great relationship of my life. And my wife had this comparison chart done with our birth information within the first month of our dating and our relationship. She said it's helpful to know the pitfalls that are possible when two people blend their lives together. Do you recommend that for couples? Did it help you? Absolutely, yeah. It uh, it helped me identify. See, I, I just have to share with one thing. My, my friends know this, and they know when I say this, I'm saying this with love. I'm married to royalty. My wife is her royal highness of maintenance, and I am her knight in shining armor, so we're perfect together. That is such a great way to put it. But, but for other couples, though, is that a great idea? She's royalty, mm -hmm. and you're in shining armor. I love that. I'm mm -hmm. using that. There you go. I love that story. So the point is, if every man on the planet honored his wife, and if every wife on the planet honored her husband, this would be a different planet in about 14 seconds. We have a war that occurs between duality, whether it's Republican and Democrats, whether it's Jews and Arabs, whether it's men and women. There's some kind of disagreement that is just that's undermining our ability to sustain peace. We're not built for peace for some reason. This is such a beautiful, I love Valentine's Day. I think it's my favorite holiday of the whole year. Why? It's all about love. It's one day where we put down our arms and we go to Hallmark. I love what you read at the beginning. And buy one of those stupid cards and look into the eyes of our beloved and say, honey, I, it could be your dog. It could be the neighbor, best friend. You can send them a Valentine and just say, I'm so thankful for you. It's like my favorite holiday. And are there signs that are totally romantically incompatible? Totally. Some people don't like romance. That's you know, You're not the most romantic chart, by the way. Your cancer helps you. But Capricorn Aquarius is not the most romantic. Mm. Is that true? No, not not for me anyway. I, you know, I'm, I'm the inveterate caretaker and caregiver and, and lover. You know what it is? Your cancer rising, your soul has taken over your ego. And this is the goal of astrology, is to get the soul. The rising sign is more important as the years go by. Mm -hmm. Sun sign. Absolutely. So yours, yours is Cancer. So for you, being romantic, like Capricorns have no time, and Aquarius don't even understand it. But Cancer is so much wanting their partner to feel loved and to love and to love. They're so wonderful. Cancers are... In my next life, I'm coming back as a cancer. It also it, it also contributes to my intuitive nature and my more sensitive personal nature, my my ability to work with subtle energy and to interpret and understand subtle energy. So it, it gives me that aspect which corresponds to the the, the more earthy part of uh, of my signs. That's exactly right. Well said. The subtle body. I love that. Yeah. Only a cancer or a Pisces would understand that term. Mm hmm. What other signs are totally romantically incompatible? So you don't want to put fire with water. So if you've got a big, loud personality type, and there's a water person next to them saying, would you please tone it down? That's going to hurt the fire person's feelings. Or 
if the fire person turns to the water and says, could you please come with tonight and leave the house? And the water's like, I don't want to go out for Valentine's Day. That could be, they're just trying to change someone's nature. So those two are incompatible. If you put water in air, water loves quiet, air loves to talk. You put a water person with an air person and they're just going to feel like you just told this person to stop breathing. If you tell the air to stop talking and if you tell the water person to start talking, they're like, I don't know what to say. So these are defining qualities that don't or do match and it's up to us as a partner to get outside the story of the sun sign and aim as we described it at the rising sign. But more importantly, you'll love the story. You ready? It's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. So there was this farmer. He got up in the morning to go milk the cows, and sure enough, there was already milk in the container, and he was so flipped out. And the next morning, the same, and then the next morning he got up really early. He wanted to know who was doing this. And he saw ladders with these beautiful women, and they were doing the milking of the cows and then going back up the ladder, and then he had this idea. So the next day it happened again, and he grabbed the last woman as she was going up the ladder and held her hand and said, please, don't go home. Stay with me here and marry me. I'll be your husband, we'll have a farm, we'll have success, we'll have children. And she said, it's a fairy tale. She said, yes, under one condition. See this little box? You can't look in the box. And he was like, no problem. So they built a house together, and they put the box under the bed, and they had kids, and they had this abundant farm. It was just a beautiful time. And then one day, for some reason, the husband comes home early from work, goes under the bed, finds a little box, opens it, and there was nothing in it. So he closes it and couldn't figure it out. And then she comes up later And she's very intuitive. And she says to him, did you open up that box? And he says, yeah. She goes, what did you see? He goes, well, that's the funniest thing. There was nothing in it. And she starts to cry. And she starts pulling out her suitcase. And she's packing all these kids and stuff up. And he's like, what? And she's like, look, I knew you'd open the box. That was expected. But my essence was in the box. And you couldn't see it? Mm. Wow. Wow. So in every relationship, we don't want to be identified as the wife or the person who's the, the loud one or the quiet one or the one. We want someone to see our essence. And when the essence isn't being seen, you feel lonely. And it can be by your dog. Dogs see your essence, or you see the dog's essence, I should say. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So at the end of the story in astrology, it's Cupid has no eyesight. You end up with these people, but you have to decide if that soul has seen yours and there's really a depth of connection. We're, we are all here to grow. That's the only, I mean, I hope that's the right answer. That's the only one I keep coming back to. We're here to evolve. And what better place in the whole world of Valentine's Day than in a relationship? There's not a better teaching ground. And if you're not in a relationship, you're in a relationship with yourself. So you can't say you're not in a relationship. So then you've got to figure out your relationship with yourself. Let's talk a little bit more about the change that's happening now with women. You sort of addressed that a little bit earlier. Do you see women, uh, the empowerment of women, uh, women coming forward and not uh, standing for uh, anything less than her male counterpart? Do you see this, the, the evolution of, of women coming to the forefront in the next 20 years? It's not even a question. It's already happened. That's so, what I mean. So number one, you know this, that I hope, that Dalai Lama said the Western woman will provide the door for enlightenment. I forget how he said it, but it will be up to her to change everything. So women, everybody, everywhere you look, from Oprah to Ellen to yoga to uh, astrology to tarot cards to energy to everything to tantra, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> we say women, women everywhere. Yes. It's just as important, however, that the male sides, this is why I love Valentine's Day, whether it's in a woman or in a man, that both sides be balanced. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that the ultimate definition of peace? Because there's so much war. I mean, it makes me so sad. This planet does not know how to do duality from a place of kindness. We just can't, we, we can't agree to disagree. We just get mean. Yeah. Why is it? The struggle for power. It's always been about the struggle for energy, the struggle for power. So if at some point we, listening audience, you and I, Victor, could open our hearts enough to stop struggling for power and just give our power where it came from, to back to source. I just live an entire life of giving my life force back to where it came from. Yeah. It's a and full-time job. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's a full-time job. I do it every day. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. Uh, somebody asked me recently, I'm an interfaith minister, among other things, and somebody asked me 
um, what is interfaith ministry about? And I said, if you cut to the chase of every major religion and faith that's ever been, and you take away the man-made, and I use man-made in capitals, aspects of those faiths and religions, the essence says, love one another, take care of one another. Right. And if we all did that, the golden rule, if we all did that, there goes what we're talking about. Wouldn't that be so cool? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's do it on that. Let's you guys. That's what you're going to do tonight. You're going to go see your sweetie and just love on them. Like, if we just all practice loving our partner. Yum, yum. Absolutely. You know the greatest part of loving your partner? Listening. Really, really listening. Good at it, Victor. This is unusual. You should be teaching this. Well, I am. <laughs> in, in, in one way or another. You know, the, the real concept is listen. Don't, don't impose your own thoughts and feelings. When someone has something to say that's really important to them, listen to what they have to say. Oh, and and, and only, don't only listen with your ears. Listen with your heart, your soul, and your mind. Listen with everything and understand listen. where they're coming from. So I want you to write this down. The word listen mm-hmm. and the word silent. Mm-hmm. And the same letters. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so the for, other, and the other thing that people have to learn is that no is a complete sentence. Right. <laughs> it's okay to say no if something is disagreeable to you or something is not right in your life. It's okay to say no. I love that. No is not. No is a full sentence. It's a complete sentence. That's not original to me. I can, I'll find out who, who said that and I'll give you that quotation. But no is a complete sentence and oh. it's so true. And listen in silence. In order to really, I have it tattooed on my arm. In order to really listen, you have to stop talking. You have to stop your inner dialogue, which is what my book is about. The book is all about turning on the observer so you can realize, wow, I interrupt all the time. Or, wow, I never talk. Or, wow, I always talk. Whatever it is. You turn your observer. You don't judge. You just become observant. My guest is Deborah Silverman. We'll be back with more of Deborah after these words on the Old Times Radio Network. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. When Dad needed help getting around, I became his driver. Soon enough, it was up to me to be his housekeeper and financial manager, too. When he moved in, I became his cook and even his nurse. But no matter what roles I play, I know I'm still his daughter. We understand the roles you play. So to help, we created aarp.org slash caregiving, where you can connect with experts and other caregivers. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. And we're back on Destination Unlimited. My guest this evening is Deborah Silverman. We're talking astrology. We're talking romance. We're talking about open hearts. We're talking about loving. And we're talking about listening. Deborah, we frequently hear about Saturn returns in our late 20s and again later in life. What is a Saturn return and how does that affect us? First time it's a 28 to 30. The second time it's 58 to 60. So it happened. that's why I was asking you, Victor. Mm-hmm. What happened to you in 2012, 2013? Mm-hmm. Um, these are the markers when astrology is a loud a neon sign saying, hello, you're now going to change. But you don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like 
Saturn comes to get you. It's your destiny. You can't argue. It's that song that I sang, falling in love with your fate. Like, here it's coming. It may be hard. It may be easy. I don't know. But you can prepare by being respectful or dutiful and taking care of things. If you don't take care of things, it takes away your money. It takes away your love. It's, it's just, it's mean. <laughs> and what should people do about it? Well, you prepare. So let's say you let's say you read the book, The Missing Element, and you realize, you know what? The truth is, I really don't have much respect for money. And then you realize, uh oh, I'm about to turn fifty-eight to sixty. Well, either this is your chance to get your money stuff in order, go visit all your like, clean up all your files, clean it, like get and change, which would set you up for another career. That's usually what you were describing. That's usually what happens between fifty-eight and sixty, or. Maybe you found out that your Saturn, your lowest element was water, and you weren't very good at emotions. And there's all this unfinished stuff with your kids or your family, and you feel emotionally like you've been, you know, it's depression stays with you. So then you decide, oh, Saturn return is coming, so I'm going to prepare by going and doing the work that I know I didn't want to deal with, that unfinished emotional stuff. So anyone born right now that's born between, I'm going to say, 58 and 60, they're in Saturn return. Or that would also be, uh, what would that be? They're 30 years old right now, so that would be 1987, 88. Uh, anyone born in that those two windows, that would describe somebody who is forced to learn about work. Like that's right now. They're, so if they said to me, I'm in Saturn return right now, Saturn's a Capricorn, I'd say, listen, your life lesson had to do with work. Either you've been a workaholic your whole life and now it's time to take a break, or you haven't really worked and done your best effort. It's never too late. Let's see if I can help you get a goal set. You know, some, get some kind of coaching and some goal set because you've gotten lazy. So you get to see how to prepare for it by where is it. This is what astrologers, my, I have a lot of certified astrologers I've taught to do just this. How do you assist someone to see what's coming and then avoid the conflict or get out of it once it's there? Mm. I have my Saturn, by the way, in Libra, 27 degrees in Libra. What does that mean? That means that relationship is your strength. That You see, it goes one of two ways, and that's why you have two marriages. This lifetime, you promise to do relationship. Here we are on Valentine's Day talking one of your favorite topics. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean just romance. That means you like to collaborate. You like to dance with the other. You want to dialogue. You want to learn. You probably had the hard school, hard knocks, how to listen and respect the other so that you were actually in, hand, in tandem and in harmony. But you had to learn the hard way. Your life lesson was to learn relationship, and that would have happened super strong in 1982-83. What happened in 82-83? I actually had the end of my first marriage. Oh, I'm sorry, 82 and 83, no. It would have happened, I'm sorry, in, uh, this happened in 95 uh, through 98. Um, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. I can see that. But take me back to 82, 83. You were just turning 30. Do you remember that one? 82 and 83. Oh, I had a shift in my job at that time. Exactly. What did you go from doing what to what? The same business, but with different people. And, and that began your career. That began your movement into success, yes? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. So that marker, and then, so yours is more career, according to Mr. Capricorn. But I would say with Saturn and Libra that you're very good at relationship. That this whole conversation, would you say that you've learned about, that you've been fascinated by relationship? Absolutely. And between 95, when, when my first marriage ended, and between 95 and 98, I had a life-changing relationship, which made me the person I am today um, very quickly without going into a lot of details because it is the 20th anniversary of this happening, uh, of the transition of my partner. Uh, I was teaching a class in meditation and in energy healing, and a friend of mine said uh, he knew this woman who had breast cancer and wanted to know more about the uh, other modalities, including energy healing and meditation and visualization. Would I meet with her? And I said, yes. And I met with her on a Sunday morning and she opened the door and we literally looked at each other and said, it's you. And it began a three-year odyssey, which ended with her transition in January of 1998. But those three years we spent together, a lot of people don't live together like a lifetime in those three years. And it made me ready for the relationship and the marriage that I'm now in. So, yes, absolutely. Oh, that is so beautiful. Valentine's Day. This is a great Valentine's Day show. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Look. So, yeah. So, that was, uh, that was what happened in my life. So, now... How can astrology be used as a tool to map out our dreams and the best time to attempt to achieve them? Well, it's just like that. So, so you can see a Saturn return cycle. And then there's seven-year cycles. So I have a school 
that happens twice a year. It happens in September and February, so you guys are going to just miss the door. But the, the school is all about teaching people in very small, bite-sized bits. It's a six-week class twice, so it's 12 weeks, and then the third one is three days. And then for a year, you learn how to do readings, and we support you by sending you clients and getting you all started. And I've watched all these women learn astrology. And the, the reason why I'm telling you that is in the name of like, if I had to say probably the most important thing for people to learn about astrology is that you are waiting to find you. <laughs> yeah. It's a great, it's a great relationship conversation. The sooner you fall in love with your stuff and get acquainted, you know, intimacy is into me. I see the more I know me, the closer I can get to you. Absolutely. Remember the line from the old Who song, when I walked into the door, I thought it was me I was looking for. Absolutely. That's so great. Well, you've definitely done your work. See, you know what it's like to grow up? It's so helpful. We need to tell kids that. Yeah. That it's so important to be able to say to them, don't worry. It gets so much better as you get older. Isn't that true? Uh, it's the truth, because as you get older, you have this collection of lessons. And, and again, a lot of it has to do with listening and learning to listen not only to others, but also listening to yourself. Um, I remember as a younger man, I was easy to anger. And if someone said something that was con confrontational to me, I would immediately respond and answer without thinking it through. And now if somebody says something that, that might not be something that I agree with, rather than immediately having to answer, I've learned just to pause, take a breath, listen, understand where that person is coming from, and if there's an appropriate answer to say something, and if not, to let it go. And that's a product of growth and maturity. Yeah, exactly. That's so beautiful. God, I wish I would have known that when I was younger. Yeah. Like, I never really had an elder say to me, I trust you when I tell you this, it's going to get so much better. Everything from depression to what you just said to anger management to understanding relationships, you, it's like you get trained. Absolutely. The other issue, the other lesson that I learned, and, and again, late, I was always the consummate caregiver to others and learned late in life to give that same care to myself and understood that by doing that for myself, I was actually also doing it for others because it was allowing me to be in the healthiest, best place I could be so that I could be fully present for others. So. That is the essence of cancer rising. Yep. Putting out your, your oxygen tank first. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. And it's unnatural. It's, an un it's for some reason we are not trained or taught. Every grandmother you had that you loved was sacrificed. Every uh, mom that was really good was completely a martyr. <laughs> absolutely. I had a grandmother who, at the age of 90, who was practically going blind, the first thing she would say is, can I make you something to eat, honey? You know, that was, <laughs> that, that's who I was. That's, that, those were my models. Those were my role models when I was a kid. So. Oh, my God. I love that. I had, some, I had grandmothers like that, too. But so that we're redoing that. We're re that's what I'm trying to say. We are, we've never been in this time period. We've never, ever had ability to go online, have a voice sneak in your head, have hundreds of thousands of people at home listen to this, and be able to share messages, and you have no idea where I'm sitting. I could be in the middle of a bathroom for all you know, ha ha. No, you're actually in the beautiful Hawaii part of Hawaii, right? That's true, that's true. There you go. And all of us here in the East who are in the middle of winter are so envious of that right now, but not really. We're actually grateful that you're joining us tonight. So uh, let's talk one more thing about astrology before we wrap the show up. We have all heard about Mercury retrograde, pure Mercury. Everybody puts Mercury down and blames Mercury for everything going wrong when Mercury is in retrograde. What's the truth about Mercury retrograde? You know, I, I so honestly, I didn't want to believe in it. But as the years have gone by, I have suspended any disbelief. It's physical. It's like when you're on a train and you see two trains and they're both going in the same direction, but one starts to go faster and it suddenly looks like it's going backwards. Mm -hmm. That's Mercury retrograde. It's actually an illusion of sorts from the Earth. But we detect it and we see it and so we call it what it is. And it's the degrees and it happens for about three weeks. It happens three times a year. And when it happens, there is noticeable difference in communication. So from airports to computers to telephones to um, dialoguing, and they say don't sign contracts. Well, that's ridiculous. If you go, I have a website called thestarcommunity.com, and on that website you will get announcements. It's, it's $22 a month, and every month you get a series of videos, the full moon, the new moon, and when Mercury's going retrograde, and, all, and when there's an eclipse, because we, we're now finally, it makes me so happy, there's so many of you that are interested in learning this language again. This is the ancient old wisdom that's finally resurfacing to give us some kind of 
what would be the right word, relativity, like some respect for the old and realizing that time is effortless in its timelessness. It goes on forever in every direction without effort. It's like this magical door. But we get so caught in the mundane. Oh, my God. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Absolutely. Please tell our listeners one more time that the name of that uh, website, The Star Community. Uh, three words, thestarcommunity.com, and that's how you can get just $22 a month, and you can become a member. We have about 700 members, and you get to learn about it's all these videos. Deborah, what are you most proud of? I would say my children. Mm. What about professionally? What are you most proud of? I got someone out of prison that was in prison for 27 years, and I gathered some angels together, and he had a life sentence, and he's out, and he's having the best time ever, and I feel very, that's probably my highlight of his lifetime. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. My guest, Deborah Silverman. Deborah, please tell our listeners one more time about your book and your websites and your work and where they can find out more about you. The book is called The Missing Element. You can get it on Amazon or you can get a signed edition from my website, which is three words, Deborah Silverman Astrology. It's D-E-B-R-A dot com. You can um, request a book and we'll mail it to you signed with your chart in it. And my website is DebraSilverMinistrata.com. And my platform where you can go and find out about every day where the moon is going to shift is the star community. And twice a year I have a school. And if you're interested in learning astrology, and I really mean that in a simple way, no matter how old you are, I can break it down for you and make it really simple in English. So thank you very much, Victor. This has been a fascinating interview. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. And to all of our listeners out there, we hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day, that love and romance are in your stars always. And remember that the greatest gift you can give to one another is to truly, truly listen. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week on Destination Unlimited. 